Gene drives have incredible potential. They could eradicate malaria, improve agricultural yields, and perhaps even tackle antibiotic-resistant bacteria. But gene drives, which involve altering the genetics of entire populations of a given organism, tend to be controversial. Given gene drives' power and controversy, scientists have spent decades studying how to conduct them safely and effectively, and today we're nearing the first outdoor launch of a gene drive targeting malaria-carrying mosquitoes on the African island of Sao Tome and Principe. But before we get into the forthcoming applications, what is a gene drive and how does it work? A gene drive enables a particular gene to become common in a population. It makes it such that this gene is more likely than normal to be inherited by the offspring of a caring individual, meaning that after several generations, much of the population should possess it. This could be, for example, a gene that prevents malaria transmission. Gene drives actually occur in nature. Certain genetic elements copy and paste themselves into new genomic locations, increasing their likelihood of inheritance. But scientists have harnessed this behavior to build more complex and customized systems for various applications. One popular gene drive design involves CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology. It looks something like this. The gene to be spread through the population is written into a carrier's genome. Alongside it is sequence encoding the CRISPR-Cas9 machinery, which includes an RNA that will guide Cas9 to cut at a particular place on the paired chromosome. When Cas9 cuts, the other chromosome serves as a template for repair, and thus this entire segment, including the target gene, is inserted. Having two copies of the drive element ensures that any offspring will have it as well, and then this copying process will repeat in the offspring. So in order to kick off the gene drive, the modified organisms are simply released into the environment. So which genes might you want to spread throughout a population? It depends on the goal. If you wanted to reduce a certain population size, say that of malaria-carrying mosquitoes, you can modify a gene to make female mosquitoes infertile. This is called a suppression drive. If instead you wanted to change a feature of a population, like a mosquito's ability to transmit malaria, you could insert or delete a gene to achieve this. This is called a modification drive, and it's the type used in leading malaria-busting gene drive initiatives. So now that humanity is on the verge of conducting this important gene drive, what have we learned about how to do this safely and effectively over the last three decades of research? First of all, for a good gene drive, you want the gene of interest to copy efficiently. There are tricks one can use to increase the likelihood that the right type of repair process happens after Cas9 cutting, and several successful strategies have been demonstrated. Efficient propagation also requires successful reproduction of drive carriers. A problem observed in some early gene drive efforts was that the gene drive cargo made carrying individuals less healthy and thus less likely to reproduce, hampering the gene drive. So it's critical to ensure that the gene drive is minimally disruptive to the organism's function. To keep carriers healthy, off-target cutting by Cas9 should also be minimized. This can be achieved by restricting Cas9's activity to particular developmental stages or tissues via the use of gene regulatory sequences, and by careful testing of the RNA used to guide Cas9. Particularly in the cases where the gene drive is harmful to an individual, mutations that destroy the gene drive may arise. And with CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing cutting the DNA, this is even more likely. These resistant mutations will offer a fitness advantage in the face of gene drive, and just by spreading them normal rates, they can outcompete the gene drive to extinction. One method to prevent resistant alleles is to drive the genes that are essential for life. Cas9 cuts within the essential gene, disrupting its function, but the gene is repaired if the gene drive element is inserted. If the cut is resolved in some other way, the individual likely will die and can't pass on the mutated sequence. Another strategy is to drive to two different locations in the genome. It's much less likely that an individual will gain a resistant mutation in both places simultaneously. Each of these tricks make gene drives more efficient, but more important is that it's done safely. A common concern among the public is that a gene drive could have some unexpected bad consequences and there'd be no way to stop it. In response, researchers have designed strategies to reverse a drive's genetic modifications by introducing a new gene drive that effectively overwrites the original one. There's also a related approach called an immunizing drive, which simply stops the original drive in its tracks by rewriting the sequence where Cas9 would have cut. Both of these types of drives were able to stop an undesired gene drive within 5 to 10 generations in a lab setting. Another common concern is that the drive might spread faster and further than desired. One way to keep a gene drive's velocity under control is to use a split gene drive, in which only some of the required elements of the drive are present in released organisms. To make the drive begin, individuals must breed with others containing the other required gene drive elements, which can be released in a slow and controlled fashion. 
This design also prevents accidental escapes of a gene drive from the lab. So given the learnings from decades of research, the UC Malaria Initiative team feels ready to begin a malaria-fighting gene drive on Sao Tome. Their last remaining hurdle, however, is to win government approval for the modified mosquitoes release. Beyond mosquitoes, there could be application for gene drives in other areas. Some major ones include in agriculture, where invasive weed species hamper crop yields, and in antibiotic-resistant bacteria, which claim hundreds and thousands of lives each year. However, much more research is needed before we consider releasing these gene drives. In an early technical description of gene drives, Austin Burt wrote that clearly the technology described here is not to be used lightly. Given the suffering caused by some species, neither is it obviously one to be ignored. Despite very valid concerns, gene drives are a huge scientific achievement and a very versatile, creative problem-solving tool. Given the limitations of CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing, next-generation gene drives that utilize other CRISPR systems are currently the works. So this is definitely not the end of the story.